Everybody, welcome to the next installment of the corn tool and cutter grinder. Been a busy week for me at work, and I just got a little time on the weekend, mostly yesterday, to make some parts. So what I wanted to do first is talk a little bit about, I made the, uh, the, the 1986 modification for the bolt, the tilting bolt, or the bolt that holds the, um, the tilt bracket and it's cone shaped and there's an article let me show you the article too while i'm doing show and tell i was, I was able to order a copy of the magazine it's the model engineers the 5th of september 1986 edition page 272 and the article's titled modifications to the tool and cutter grinder i've actually seen this before but i, I thought it was all about the um, rotating head but actually they go into a section of discussing the, the alternative clamping method, they call it. And this is the, the plans, the bolt and stuff. And you can actually find these online in the corn groups IO file section. So uh, I did buy the magazine. I got it off of eBay. Many thanks to the seller there. Um, but it's an interesting thing. And the, I, I did ask some of the people on the corn uh, groups.io group if they had made it and if it was worthwhile to make this rather than using a straight bolt through the bracket and they did say yes so that's why I went ahead and made that so this is a perfect project for just having a short period of time I know you I'm, I've got the iPhone set up there you can't see real well but I'm pointing to the, the rotating head and or the, the work head base rather and this is where the bolt is. I'll take it out and do and bring it up as a close-up in a second. So it bolts onto the back here. It has a little shoulder, excuse me, that keeps it from rotating that way. 5 16 24 nut on the back. And this bolt is basically two, two pieces. So let me show you here. The rest of this video shows you how I made that. And I didn't make the nut. But there's a the cone shaped bolt, then there's this little cone thing that is a cone collet they call it, and they call it it's described as a cone collet, and the the um, five sixteenths twenty four threaded and five sixteenths inch um, protrusion the bolt here, and as you can see there's a little. I've just put a little piece of brass in there. That's the only three thirty seconds piece I had. It's kind of an anti-rotation thing for the collet. So the idea is that this is bolted to the back of the workhead base. The tilting bracket goes on top of it, and then the, the collet slips on, and this is for anti-rotation. And then there's a, a ball handle here that you use for tightness. So basically, you get a lot more clamping force because of these 20-degree cones and that apparently the way this is designed it's a lot less likely to twist um, when you when you tighten the tilting bracket so that's the beauty of this design it was not hard to make and it was very interesting the next few segments of videos that you'll see actually show it's a, it's pretty probably come out pretty short probably 15 minutes or so um, so this is made this weekend the next things I'll be working on are the tilting bracket. And in order to machine the tilting bracket, I started planning out my steps. I decided to make a little stub arbor as well. So this has got the 20 degree cone on it. And this is just under 3 8 of an inch, this little stub that sticks out a quarter of an inch here. And it's threaded 5 16 24 on the back. And my idea is that when I've got the, the I need to support the, um, the device. Well, here, let me show you here. I've already, I've got this in. I've got the tilting bracket in a four jaw chuck. Got it right here, as you can see. So that's probably the the first phase of machining. Will be in the four jaw chuck on the lathe, and I'm not gonna be able to see this. Anyway, the the, set, the first phase, I'll put the hole through the center where the black mark is there and then I'll be cutting the 20 degree cone and then I'll be able I have to use different clamping methods for when I flip it around to the other side so my idea is this part will fit inside the part that I've machined I can thread 
a, a piece of steel stock or a aluminum square or something that I'm using to support this for the subsequent machining parts. So that's the idea there. Is there anything else I need to discuss? Just uh, glad again that I bought the prints from Martin Model. This is, I've made Xeroxes of sections of it. That's what shows you what it looks like. That's what clued me into the whole idea about the cone shaped um, bolt and that it shows the picture of it there. So hope this is helpful to you. Again, it's not a very intense thing, but um, making progress on the corn. That's kind of my motto is do a little bit at a time. The next thing will be the tilting bracket itself and I'll have a longer video for you showing the machining of that. So thanks again and I hope you enjoy. Hey folks, for this uh, segment, this is the building the bolt for the tilting bracket and I've just machined the cone that will go on the outside towards the operator. Got a 20 degree angle set up here parallax there but 20 degree angle I'll just use that leave that the same for all these different turning operations it's I started out with a 5 8 inch thick piece of steel I left an eighth inch shoulder here that you can see and then I, I went ahead a quarter inch did a use the cutoff tool to go down to 5 16 inch diameter as you can see I made it a little bit lower because when I get all done here I can just drill out the center, drill and ream out the center for 5 16 and it, the collet should pop loose. That's a little trick I learned off of one of Mr. Crispin's videos, parting off with a drill. So we'll see how that, well that works. The next thing I'm going to do is take this out, put it, it's in a 5C collet now, I'll take it out, take it over to the mill and mill a little uh, 3 32nd inch slot in there that I can use for the alignment pin. What I did just like always, I draw out the pieces beforehand. It's been a real busy week at work. I've been playing around with stuff with the tilting bracket, but I thought, you know, this would be a good thing I could knock out the bolt and the cone and stuff this week. For this segment, I've got a 332nd inch end mill, and I've got the cone in a 5C collet here. And I've just been milling the slot. I've got it down to 0.131, I need to go about the 1, 0.156, so I'll mill that down a little bit. My daughter's going to video while I do this. I'm only taking off about 20 thou at a time. I don't want to break the 332nd inch cutter. You can see I've got the mill at a pretty slow rate, feed is very slow, feeling my way in there. I set the z-axis at zero before I started. the part she came out to talk so I enlisted her in helping with the video all right so there we go should be a good depth Put the mill off got the phase converter off So here we are, got the cutoff tool. It shouldn't take much to part that little thing loose. Next time I'll have to make the undercut a lot. Deeper. Alright folks, here we go. Let's try this again. I increase the undercut. Five sixteen inch drill in there. It's always pushing back or something. It's so weird. Huh? 
Oh, there we go. All right, look. I parted off. Cool. So the little trick works. And for this segment of making the bolt, I've just taken my piece of 5 16 inch, excuse me, uh, 5 8 inch steel. I turned for the, I'm making it the back half first. I turned this down the uh, one inch length of it for to 5 16 and you can see I kind of rounded the edge there. And I just now set up my little um, diamond tool cutter. I love to use this thing for threading. So I've got the lathe set to cut three, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 5 16 24 threads, fine threads on there. So I'll do a 3 8 inch section of it here. All right, I didn't take a video of it, but I did take a scratch pass with the uh, diamond tool holder. I got the 24 thread per inch gauge out and check fits like a glove. So we'll proceed. We'll go ahead and cut the threads in there. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to make this, this is the back half of it. So the threaded portion is a half inch long. And after threading the back half inch, of the back section, I, I in, inserted the cutoff tool and I went over 3 eighths of an inch because it's got the 1 eighth inch shoulder and the quarter inch thickness of the cone and, and then I, I went down, cut into 5 sixteenths of an inch so I have a relief area there and I'll begin cutting the cone next. Okay, we're getting, making some progress on the bolt. I'm using the cross slide, I'll back out a little bit here so you can see my hand. Probably the last couple of cuts. Just like I made the cone. Space to eighth inch. I put a little mark with my cutoff tool before I remove that. So I can see where the lathe tool is making contact. I just ease it in a little bit. Take a little bit off the 20 degree taper. I sped up the lathe on 360 RPM, I think now. Cutting in both directions. Probably just another cut or two and I'll be done. Just going in a few thou at a time. go a little faster if I wasn't holding an iPhone in one hand, but that's okay. Easing in a little bit. There you go. You can see where the cut is in relation to the eighth inch shoulder. You can see the 5 16 24 jam nut that I left on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed it in back here, just a couple thou, about three thou, and go backwards because you get a pretty smooth cut that way. There we go. I think that's done. Let's put the power off on the lathe and take a look. There we go, yeah. I'll put a file on that just to take the little raised edge off of that. Yeah, but it's good to go. And I forgot I left the nut on here. It's handy for, I put it on there so I could pull out because uh, obviously I exposed a little bit. That's a trick I learned making valves for the locomotive is just you don't want to start with this much stick out or you'll be putting a lot of pressure on the on the steel. So I just do one segment at a time. And now that this is done, let's see, oh yeah. Well, I guess I'll keep working on it, but I do. I'm, I am going to have to take it out, and yeah, I'll probably take it out now, and mill off the uh, the shoulder. I need to put it, keep it in the 5C collet, put it in the collet chuck, put it in the mill, and mill that shoulder down for the anti-rotation thing. I'll do that next. And here's a video. I didn't shoot video of while I was milling it, but I used a quarter-inch mill to mill the flat, the eighth inch flat shoulder on the bolt in the 5C collet chuck, collet block. So now I can put this chuck back in the lathe, or this collet back in the lathe and finish the other side. Yeah, 
I'm taking the final cut on what's basically the front side using the automatic feed. Just take it down to uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter for an inch and a quarter. A little bit longer just to allow for the cutoff tool. I'll clean this part up with a file. I didn't want to mess up my perfectly shaped cone there. I don't think it's going to matter anyway, but I'll, I'll dress that down with a file. And then I'll cut it off, and then I can grip it in a 5 sixteenths 5C collet and flip it around and thread that in. Okay, about to knock off for the evening, kind of late on a Saturday night. But this is the this shows the basically the finished bolt with the cone shape. I've got them set about an inch apart, and it looks good. I made this threaded portion a little bit longer. I made it a half inch long just in case. So I have to remember when I take this out tomorrow and I drill the hole for the three eighths inch pin. Make sure that I I do it at the right spot. That's why I separated these by by one inch because that's going to be the thickness the finished finished thickness of the body, the cone portions are one inch apart in this depiction right here. In this segment I'm drilling a hole for the pin, the locking pin, it's a 332nd inch diameter hole. It's just clearing out the hole there actually I already drilled. I drilled about 150 thou deep, so about a half the diameter of the 516 inch rod. I'll take that out and show you the finished product here in a minute. 